everybody. I'm Joseph Cazier. I'm the executive director of the Center for Analytics Research and Education at Appalachian State University. And I also chair the Appamonia Working Group for B Data Standardization. And I'm going to talk a little bit today about how do we standardize the world's B data and why we should do that and why that's so important and why we're using BXML to do it and how you can help. And so if we think about it, Data science, which I do every day as a data scientist, is really about making smarter decisions. And we believe that our bees in our world needs smarter decisions right now. And data science can help us do that. We can see from related industries like agriculture that precision agriculture and data science has already, lead, has already led to a decrease in cost and an increase in yields around the world. And we want to bring that power to us as beekeepers and to receive and benefit from similar effects. And so the first thing to understand about data science is that it needs large amounts of data. If we look at the traditional analysis, from existing algorithms. Those are algorithms that have been developed over years, centuries in some cases, on small data sets and we've abstracted and really can understand a lot of the things that are in there. And so with traditional programming, what we're really doing is we're taking a predefined algorithm and applying it to data to get the results. What is different with machine learning and why it's so important to bring it to the apicultural space is machine learning really creates new customized algorithms for that data set. And so you take the input, you take labeled data of the result, a hive lived or died or it fought off a roa or some other condition, and then you build an algorithm just to predict or help with or optimize that aspect of it. And so you're really building an algorithm from scratch, which gives you power. To do that, you have to have large amounts of data because you haven't had years or decades to develop these general algorithms and you want to customize it to that. And so to really be successful, the beekeeping data needs to be standardized and merged because none of us, no matter how big our operation is right now, none of us will have enough to really do this on our own. Our industry is fairly fractured and even large beekeepers are in a generally uh, geographically confined space. And if we really want to understand to reap the full benefits, all of this data or much of it needs to be pooled and understood. And it can only be pooled and analyzed if it's standardized so that similar people are keeping data in similar ways that they can be put together so that we can really unleash the true power of machine learning and technology to benefit apiculture. And so in order to proceed in standardizing the data, there's several steps that needs to happen. First, in mo we have to identify what are the most important things to measure. We can't standardize everything at once, and so identifying that. So starting with some common data, hive inspections and other practices, but identifying those things that are likely to matter most, the most powerful features in the data set, identify those first, and then we need to decide, well, how, what are the best ways to measure those things? And it, sometimes there can be multiple ways, but how do we put them together when there's multiple ways, how to measure it? But after that, there's this other piece, which we have to have the technical architecture so that similar data on similar topics is stored in a way that they can be put together and merged with whatever people are willing to share to help enable this data science. And so this is the technical standard for storing and transmitting the data, and it defines the data type and how to move that forward. And so this is where XML comes in. XML stands for Extensible Markup Language. And similar to its cousin HTML, it is a way to sort of define the meaning of 
information or data. So HTML does this by defining formats, make this bold, make this red, make it whatever color, and so it can appear on any browser. XML, also a markup language like HTML, focuses on the meaning of information and lets you develop customized tags to say this is a Varroa test, this is a hive inspection, and here's the other details in it. And so this is a technology that's been around almost as long as HTML and it's very useful and it's standard thousands of things from beer XML to your Microsoft Word documents that's what the X is on DocX in order to make these interchanging. The reason our committee wants to use XML as opposed to JSON or some other technology is that it's human readable so that non-technical people, smart but non-technical people can still read and understand and interact with the documents. And so we have a working group, BXML, that is set to define a standard to allow for the interchange of this data. And so we founded with uh, Walter Hefecker and some others, an Appamondia working group on the standardization of data on bees and beekeeping with the express mission to enable data sharing. And so people can still choose what part of their data they want to share and how much of it they want to keep to themselves. That's fine. But the mission of our working group as a neutral third party is to create a standard so that anyone who wishes is enabled to share that data by storing it in a similar way and having a mechanism to do that. And so we see really our committee's group is about three broad categories of things that we can work in. Number one is defining the technical standards so that as we store similar data, that can be exchanged and, and moved around and people that are developing apps or technologies can store them in a similar way. In some cases to make best practice recommendations. For example, at our meeting last December 2019, uh, the committee voted on some recommendations around privacy about what resolution when you share data publicly should you have for a hive location. And in that case, it recommended three kilometers uh, to give enough precision to be useful for scientists analyzing the data, but to give enough privacy so that somebody couldn't walk up right to where an image of a hive was taken, for example. The other way is through data harmonization, and so many times we measure a similar thing, such as a varroa load on a hive, but there's you know, a dozen or so different ways that that can be measured. How can you harmonize that data so that different measures of similar things can be aggregated in a way that you can do machine learning on them? And so as a process, this group is sponsoring a data standardization journal as a way to have a vehicle to review and build consensus for this standard. We want it to be collaborative. We want to involve everybody that is willing to pitch in or review or give feedback to do this. And so what this does is this gives us a way to go through a careful, thoughtful review process to have different stakeholders look at it and to define a library that would house also an XML schema. So we don't need to go into technical details other than that is a way that's like a dictionary that defines the standard that you can reference in a document when two parties or more are exchanging data. And so it defines that standard so that it can be exchanged. It includes an XML tag, the data type, is it a number, is it a character? Um, and the length and other nesting information if needed. And then we go through a peer review and an open review process that anyone in the world can comment before those standards are adopted and participate in. So let's take a moment and outline that process for the journal. And again, the purpose of the journal is to create a vehicle to develop a standard where everybody can participate in. And so we have this journal uh, launching now. And so you can say anyone that uses a certain standard can submit uh, an idea and say, well, I'm gonna look at hive monitoring data or hive inspection data or apitherapy data, whatever it is that is relevant to bees and beekeeping. And that would be submitted. 
and then to the editor and the editor would send that out for first a peer review that would check for completeness and appropriateness and does it fit and resolve those type of questions and is it, is it clear and reasonable and then once we go through that kind of quick uh, hopefully quick peer review process and then um, some tags are developed these are the xml tags that uh, find the standard and then we go into an open comment period where we say here is a proposed standard it's been recommended or at least through peer review and we have an open comment period that anyone anywhere can review and comment on is that the right standard is should the length be longer should this or that or did we miss something and so review and feedback and, and we make adjustments and then we have a vote of our committee members uh, on that standard and if it passes then that standard is adopted and published in the journal and the schema that is the technical code that allows that interchange is also posted to a server and then anyone anywhere can use that screen schema and and share that type of data and this can grow over time with as much data as we have people submit again this isn't about necessarily collecting the data it's about the metadata and so it's the proposal for the standard and so it's it's not that you're opening up necessarily the inside of your database and handing that data over it's here's the type of things that we think should be measured and why and, and a general proposal is is made and then all that data can be shared uh, with anyone that you choose to and so we do be as a Appamondia working group we plan to organize the journal and the standard by the Appamondia topics I have bolded here beekeeping technology and quality because that is the scientific commission of Appamondia that our working group reports to and falls under so how can you help where there's several ways uh, one is you can write an article proposing a standard or a data recommendation or harmonization study uh, and just go to bxml.pubpub.org is the site of our journal again we're just launching now there's a couple of policies we're still posting but we are starting to accept proposals here very quickly and give either give feedback if you want to help give feedback during the open review period we'll announce it as broadly as we can and so certainly you can review any proposed standards and, and make sure they fit with what your organization is interested in doing and give any feedback you can share metadata that's again data about data and then it can be turned into a, a standard recommendation and we also ask that you adopt and use a standard and if you have again if you have data that's important to you and again it's not the data we need but the quite but the um, definition of the data share that propose it as a standard and others may collect similar data and then should you be uh, willing to share at some point certainly that can be done or join the working group bxmlstandard at gmail.com we'll connect uh, to our committee and uh, and feel free to join the group and speaking of the group we've already had several um, distinguished members of our broader community join and are sharing their wisdom thank you to all of you that have done that but we're right around uh, 35 to 40 members in our committee right now that are actively helping out on this effort and the more eyes we get on this the better and so should you have an interest please let us know and finally thank you to our sponsors who have helped uh, move this forward and I hope there'll be more uh, this does take time and effort it's a pretty much a volunteer effort but there are certainly some costs that have to be uh, maintained as, as we go forward thank you for considering that and I invite you to become part of the solution to help build a standard and use a standard so that we can apply these techniques to help really apply the power of machine learning and artificial intelligence to the B space and reap the benefits. Thank you.